Hey everybody, it's Tammy at TammyBracketDesigns.etsy.com. There have been some questions about my uh, my uh, video about my mini macaroni box junk journal. So since we're snowed in again today, I thought that I would do a full tutorial about how all these little books come together. And they're very easy and you can do them from things that you have around your house. You can send your kids on a scavenger hunt for things like uh, paper and old buttons and embellishments and things and paper, 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 lots of it, lots of paper. <laughs> so you can can send your kids on a on a scavenger hunt to find things, and it's a great way to clean out uh, any scrap papers that you have, scrap scrap cardboard, scrap um, card stock, scrap booking papers, what whatever. Just any anything that you have works in these little books. Basically, what I'm going to go over with you today is how to prep your box or your book, cover your book, and work on some cover art, and how to prepare your signatures, and then your binding and your closure for the book. Signatures. These are signatures. Uh, when I first started making books, I didn't know what a signature was. If you look at the book, you can see one, two, three, four five signatures. Um, signatures are almost like little mini books unto themselves and then um, you bind them all together but that is what a signature is. So we'll be working on our signatures uh, before we do our binding and our closure. Basically what we need is a macaroni box and any sort of macaroni box will do. Um, if, if you don't want to do many journals and you just want to do a, a full-size journal, then just use the whole macaroni box and kind of tweak this tutorial to work for a whole kind of box, a complete box instead of little little mini uh, journals. The, the front of a macaroni box is about 7 inches tall from, from here to here. You don't want to measure from the flap, so just measure the front so it's seven inches so you measure down to three and a half inches and then uh, you whack your macaroni box in half and basically what you're left with is this and each macaroni box makes two mini journals so take one of your box halves and you're going to slice it up the spine right here so just cut this right here and then what you're left with is something that looks like this, right? So you've, you've made a cut right here in the spine of the box. And this is what you're left with. Okay, now I do a little, um, do a little bit of tweaking here. Um, I, I cut this off, I cut this flap off, I cut these to where they're even, and then I cut right here because it makes this tab fold into the spine a whole lot better. And of course, I'm going to cut that off too. So when my book is all trimmed up, it looks like this. Now, a lot of times there are glue tabs on these boxes. And sometimes they come off really easily and sometimes they don't. But the best thing to do is kind of just take a... Um, like um, take a, a knife and just kind of scrape it and honestly when you do that a lot of times they come right off if they do not come right off just leave it alone it's it is no big deal just just let it be where it is it's a whole lot better to just leave it where it is than to scrape it off and scrape a hole in your book okay now we're going to use a glue runner and we're going to glue these corners down uh, I like to fold in this way, and then I like to fold the top down. Okay, and here we go. Uh-oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I think we're out. Oh, darn. Okay. We'll just use some glue. So, I'm going to put glue here, glue here, and glue right here. All right. Again, I like to fold this side in, and then I like to fold that one over the top. All right. 
we have the beginnings of your awesome book. Now I had to use glue instead of the glue runner, which I immediately ran out of. Um, so it's, it's better if you use glue to let that glue dry a little bit. See, it's, it's wanting to already come up. So it's much better to let let it dry. I can't believe I ran out of my glue runner. Oh well. Okay, now this is what we have left. The next thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to cover this little booklet right here. I mean the, our book right here. I used a technique. Um, I love Jenny Belly and I use to make the covers of my books, I use a Jenny Belly scrunch tutorial. Um, it's a Jenny Belly, hold on a second, jennybelly.blogspot.com instant scrunch background texture technique. And basically you're going to take a piece of packing paper and uh, through a process of scrunching it up and painting it and um, doing a few more techniques to it, you end up with something that looks like this. And oh my gosh, I mean, it's really pretty. It's very unique. Um, so what we'll do is I've already made myself a piece of Jenny Belly scrunch paper. So what I'm going to do next is put my book down. And what I've done basically is just kind of mark where I need to cut. Do you see? See these marks right here? That's where I need to cut the paper in order to fold it onto the macaroni box. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a cut. Be sure that you do not mark your line close to the corner of the macaroni box because it's really easy to miscalculate that and not have enough not have enough paper to cover the box. You don't throw that paper away. It's great paper. It's so pretty. Okay, so still got problems with my box coming undone. Right now, I've mixed up a little bit of water and tacky glue, and that's what I'm going to use to adhere the um, the scrunch paper to the book. I'm just going to spread that everywhere. on my lines again and line this up as best you can. I like to fold the um, I like to fold the sides in first. Fold the sides in like this. You might have to kind of push these edges in a little bit. You know, you don't, I mean, the book is, is a junk journal, folks, you know. <laughs> Not anything that's, you know, complex or you got to be real careful about. If it were like that, I would not be doing it. Okay. So now, put this up here. Now, basically, what you have is a wet piece of cardboard. So, you're going to want to let this dry a little bit. And if I was thinking clearly, I would have probably had one kind of mocked up. Oh, wait a minute. I've got one over here. Okay. There we go. That's the beginning of your little book. All right. Cool, huh? And, um, let's see. Here's one. 
This is basically, you'll want to let it dry, and when it dries, it kind of, you know, it has this texture to it. It's really, oh, it's just chunky and good. It's chunky and good. All right. All right, so now we have the, um, we have our book, um, our book basic finished. Well, what we're going to work on now, and a lot of times what's the, a really good thing to do when, when this is drawing, is to kind of work on your cover art. And basically your cover art is going to be about three by three. And so I just, I made myself a little template. And uh, while this was, while it's drying for just a few minutes, then I can kind of figure out, you know, where where I want things um, on my cover. Mm. Mm. I think uh, I'm just using scraps. Uh, maybe something like that. Mm. Okay, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you know, maybe something like that. Um, Okay, uh, I think. Okay, I think that's good. I think I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I can also. Uh, I did the hundred days project uh, last year, where you did a piece of art for a hundred days, but I only got through sixty days because that's just all I could do. Um, but these are ATCs, and I've found that these ATCs work really great on these little journals. So I mean, that would be. That would be cool too if you wanted to, to trim this down and do that. But okay, I think I'm gonna go with with this little thing up here. Alright, this this little template really helps a whole lot when you're you know when you're trying to, to figure out your cover art and how big it should be. So basically, how did I have that? I think I had this here. This was at the top. Okay, that's going to be a little too big. I have to bring that down just a little bit, which is okay. Right. Here. Okay, remember you have to, you're going to have to leave room for your brad over here. So just don't push your art all the way to the edge here because you have to leave room for your brad for your closure. Okay, I kind of like that. That's cool. All right, and I am without tape runner. So, it's a lot of fun to, to do these because they're, oh my gosh, I mean, boy, can you really use up your your scrap paper. I mean, even little tiny scraps. You know those inchies that people are doing now? I, I think, I mean, imagine a cover with inchy art. <laughs> it would look pretty cool. Okay, I think I had... Up here. You can also see how really simple this is and how kids would love it. I mean, it's just such a fun, cool, easy thing, and you know, it keeps all of those boxes out of the um, keeps all those boxes out of the out of the landfill, even out of the recycling. You know, you can. Gosh, when Monday rolls around, we have so much recycling. We have a lot of cans, and we used to have boxes, but now we don't have too many. I discovered how to make a book out of a box. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, that's kind of cool. All right. Okay, now let's kind of set that aside for a minute. And I want to talk to you about um, the way that you make a signature. And basically, sorry, I'm trying to stand up and use my tablet, and it's, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, okay. So signatures, like we talked about, are the um, 
are the 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 books that go inside the book basically so we are we're going to do five signatures and each signature has 10 pages each signature has a cover and your cover is hold on a second i have this your cover sorry this might be helpful your cover is seven and three quarters inches and that the i make my covers from from scrap card stock. The papers that go inside the signatures, inside the covers, are six and a half by three. And I've just used scrap copy paper. Doesn't even matter. Whatever I can find is what I've used. Um, so here we go. We have seven, uh, a seven and three and a quarter this way. And I've just filled it with scrap stuff. And that's how it looks. Now, this is copy paper. And this is the paper that is six and a half by three. I use five sheets of this. And then, you know, I stick it in here like that. And that is my signature. So I've got one, two, three, Four already made. Um, I wanted to show you how how I do these, and it's really easy. Usually, like I just spend maybe an hour and just go through my scrap paper and and make some covers, um, make other things that can kind of go in the signatures. I do small papers. Um, these are like really small papers. And then I will have a box of my um, of my white copy papers to go in my signatures. So that's here. You can see it's kind of like an assembly line thing. So I, I need one more. I need one more signature. And I'm kind of working with a, a pinky, yellow, blue-ish kind of thing here. So... Um, pinky, yellow, pinky, yellow, bluish. Um, okay. I like that. I haven't used that yet. So this is, okay, if you can count, count this way. This is one, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to stick in your white copy paper. And that is your signature. So, again, you need five of these. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, after your signatures are done, and after your book has dried a little bit, then it's time to bind everything all together. So you can take the uh, take the clips off your signatures and start binding. Now the way that I bind the signatures into the book, a I got to make sure that everything's going to fit. So we kind of. Yep, that's good. It's got a tiny bit of overhang, but I like that. I like a little bit of overhang. It's a junk journal. It's not a perfect something or another. Um, all right. Okay. This is where a lot of people have been having questions. Um, this is a basic twine binding, and I'll show you how it's done. I have... Um, 48 inches of twine. I think that was right. Hold on a second. I wrote it down for you and I wrote it down for me. 48 inches. Yes, a 48 inch uh, length of twine. Now what you do here is you kind of measure and leave, you know, leave a little tail here. All right. And then we're going to go one two, three, four, 
look on the inside because that's where you'll need your five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and there we are. Now, this is really confusing to me when I first started doing it, and then I kind of got the hang of it. Now, what you're going to do is bring your first, um, your first go at here, okay? And then you cross it with the top one. You bring everything under, and you give it a tie. And give it kind of pull, and give it a little bit of a, you know, you don't want your signatures to come undone from the inside. Now this is where you can, um, you can put on a little embellishment, a charm, um, uh, let's see, I think I have something over here, but I don't see it now. Um, mm -mm. Thought I had something, but I guess I don't. Um, you can put a little charm or, or whatever you want to right there. Oh, here it is. I thought a key would be really pretty. 